Hello and welcome to another Visual Basic game programming tutorial. I'm Ardaramus and in this video I will be showing you how to create a simple inventory system for your game. In this uh, demonstration I will be showing you how to produce an inventory menu that looks sort of like this. Um, I showed this in a recent project update. Uh, what you can see is that we have a very simple inventory list with stackable items, a little number indicator showing how many items we have in our stack and also a description and a name of the item in our bag. So I'll be using sort of a simple backpack system if you will. Uh, so that's what we should end up with here when we're done. Now, if you've been following along in my other tutorials, uh, you may notice that the project looked a little different than it did before. I've made some uh, pretty big adjustments to it recently, but I will be providing the source code uh, for this segment on the video in the About section. Um, if you have questions about that, feel free to ask. And, uh, you know, there are some pretty big changes in there, but you know staying on topic and not getting too much into those other bits and pieces we should be able to still produce this effect in your old versions if you want to try it or in your own projects that's what the tutorials for right <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started uh, I've created a couple of small graphics uh, to be drawn as our inventory. The first step is, you know, an, an item representing the item that I'm going to be placing in my backpack. What you would really want is, you know, an entire sprite sheet or tile set of items that you could call upon and draw different types of items from. Uh, if you're using a graphical inventory display, if you're going for something really old school like Dragon Warrior 1, you know, or uh, all your items are in text, uh, that's fine too, and save you a little work, um, but you'll, uh, otherwise you're going to want something to display in your backpack. Um, I have also created a very ugly and basic backdrop for my inventory screen, as you saw just a little bit ago. Uh, you can get pretty fancy with these. You can create any number of effects um, <clears throat> and just draw them to your inventory window. Uh, of course, you'll have to position and overlay your information as desired, but you should be able to figure out how to do that. Um, let's go ahead and go into your project in the Solution Explorer. We're going to have to create a few new classes here, uh, sort of a hierarchy of classes. Um, starting with a player class and uh, then a backpack class and finally for the bottom you know an item class you could go even deeper than that if you wanted uh, you could do you know item effects and and whatnot which is probably where you're going to want to go ultimately so you can have different uh, items have different effects or a, a list of effects that items have like healing and things like that so um, I'm going to go ahead and probably just place these main ones in our globals folder here. I'm going to click on that to expand it. <clears throat> uh, it looks like I've already created an items folder here. Sorry about that. But uh, to create this items folder, uh, you can just right click on your globals folder, select add, and select a new folder. Uh, and then once you have that items folder created, we're going to go ahead and right click on that and add a class and I'm going to call that class item. So this is going to be the base structure for our item class. Uh, it'll store uh, things like the item name description, whether it's stackable or not, uh, and also a reference to its image assets. Um, I'm going to create another one and this is going to be our backpack. This will be the next level up the backpack will store the items and then I'm going to create uh, in the globals root here 
uh, pretty much the top of the structure and this one is just going to be called player. Uh, something we probably should have done a long time ago but it's just you know this player class could be the base of uh, all your player storage, your players progress, uh, uh, you know quests and items and you know anything that is associated with your player in the game. Um, let's see what else do I want um, that should be good for now I know that you know we'll have to create the inventory screen class as well but we'll uh, catch that a little bit later uh, for now what I'm gonna do is uh, import my um, the item graphics that I just showed you and again uh, I've, I've kind of deviated from this uh, structure because I like to uh, call them as image assets now and that, that that allows me to you know dynamically reference them and also load them uh, from disk uh, either from the map file or some other file uh, at runtime so uh, what I've done is I've created this image asset list and it sort of uh, piggybacks on the textures class that we've used in previous tutorials uh, generally what we were doing before is adding you know a shared reference to a specific texture that we imported into this list uh, we're gonna still be using that to a degree but I'm also going to be implementing this image assets um, list to track that so we can uh, use it in more of a, <clears throat> a proper fashion so uh, let's see sorry I gotta pause for a sec all right let's go ahead and um, you know I of course I'll be providing the source code and it'll have these uh, you know item lists as well so I'm just using a single graphic f instead of a sprite sheet for um, my items and I'm gonna go ahead and drag in that uh, background graphic as well and put those both in my graphics folder under my XNA game content if you have your own images you can use those um, and then I'm gonna have to create a reference I'm gonna go ahead and uh, combine these methods and this one will be called inventory let's see and we'll do um, yeah I'm gonna say public shared inventory you can call it inventory background we're going to call it inventory um, as a texture 2d and also I'm going to create a reference to the item that I'm using and I'm just going to call it uh, items Hopefully in the future I'll have a an actual you know tile set or sprite sheet of uh, items that you, we can use. Uh, for now, this is all I have. It takes me forever to do the graphics, so of course I I'm stubborn and I like to use my own. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and bring in our inventory graphic equals globals um, dot content dot load and the type is of texture 2d and we have to create a reference to that and of course we put that in our graphics folder so or gfx backslash and then uh, the name of the file and my background is going to be INVBG and I will just copy this line so I don't have to retype all that I'm a little slow tonight as usual <laughs> and this will be called items okay and like I said, I'm going to sort of do a little bit of um, hybrid system here so I can utilize this, which makes it a little more dynamic in the end. Um, this fetch image function will, re you know, it'll return the proper texture for whatever you're using based on its name. It's pretty nice. Um, 
Let's go ahead and I'm going to do this below tunes. Uh, just going to call this temp imports because it's sort of a temporary setup just so we actually uh, get this graphic imported. I say dim IA as a new image asset. And then I'm going to say with IA. Uh, we want to just essentially set the image, which is going to be the texture 2D, uh, to the texture 2D that we just set here. So it's just going to be um, image property is going to equal items. And below that, we are going to set the name. <clears throat> this is the alias that we reference. Uh, so if we import graphics directly from our map editor, uh, we can reference those by name and send it through our map file. Uh, so it loads everything up dynamically, and we never have to do uh, this sort of stuff anymore, which is really nice. But since I'm not using the map editor for items yet, I don't have that all set up. I'm just going to give that a name of items to reference. And then we're going to add that to our image assets list. So I'm going to say image assets um, dot add. And I'm going to add the new item that we just stored, the new image asset we just created. And that should be good for now. So. That'll give us a reference to our actual graphics. And I'll close out of that class.